we do it all again? <laughs> The iPad HD, the future of our devices, download maps before your connection goes bad, and the new Contour Plus camera. I'm Callie Lewis. Welcome to Geek TV number 210. This episode of Geek TV is brought to you by Audible.com. Before we get into it, I just want to mention one thing. If you're in Dallas and interested in working with us here at Livid Lobster, we're looking for people. We get so many gadgets in the mail and we'd love your help. If you're interested in helping to play with new technology and gadgets and writing reviews for them, let us know. All the details are at geekbeat.tv slash bloggers. We look forward to hearing from you. Lately, the creative community has been full of complaints because it seems Apple is moving away from their roots, designers and video editors. Final Cut 10? Not exactly making the community happy. It's too basic and targeted at people who don't use it to make a living. It may be part of a larger plan, though. There's a rumor that we'll soon see the iPad HD, a different version of the iPad targeted at the creative market. If true, it'll have a 2048 by 1536 screen resolution. Again, if true, I see why they made Final Cut 10 the way they did. It'll be ported over to the iPad more effectively. But it doesn't mean that editors will be happy. People who edit all day long every day, like our Dave Curley, don't necessarily want to move to a smaller device. He kind of likes his four screen setup. I guess the iPad HD could be a nice travel option if there's enough processing power. How long will it take to render and export? No idea just yet. But I think Apple wants to move into a scenario where the world does everything on mobile type devices. And if Apple has their heart set on it, well, the market just might follow. Will we lose the desktop? Processing power in mobile devices isn't there and won't be for a while to lose the desktop for specialized needs, in my opinion. What do you think of a world where we might be living like this in about 10 years? Leave a comment, geekbeat.tv slash 210. Something that also isn't quite there is internet access. As great of a connection as most of us have, there are still places, in the US at least, that fail us at times. Say, for example, you're driving in a rural area, you're trying to figure out which street to turn on and the connection goes kaplunk. Google is making that issue a non-issue. If you have Google Maps 5.7 on Android, you can activate a labs feature called Download Map Area. Before you head out, download the map up to a 10 mile radius at your desired location. You can then access that if your connection isn't good and zoom in out just like normal. You can delete maps when you're done with them or they'll delete themselves after 30 days. Great useful new feature, Google. While you're out there driving, you also might want something to listen to. That's where Audible comes in. Audible gives you the ability to listen to books anytime, anywhere, rather than being tied down to sitting and focusing all your attention on one thing. Have a long commute to work? Or maybe you need some inspiration while at the gym. Audible books are perfect for that. At Photoscott on Twitter suggests, when I stop talking, you'll know I'm dead. You can get that book for free or another free audiobook when you sign up at audiblepodcast.com slash geekbeats. John P. had a chance to chat with Mark Barros, the CEO of Contour, about their new Contour Plus. Take a look. Well, listen, we are big fans of Contour around here. We've got like at least half a dozen of these units floating around, and we've used them for all kinds of stuff. But, you know, some people are not really very familiar with Contour yet. So just can you tell us a little bit? You guys have a really interesting story about how you got started. Let us know. Let us know how you got how you got started in the camcorder business. Con what uh, Contour is today is we enable people with an active lifestyle to tell their story through video. So today, what we have definitely didn't start with back in the day. We started this thing out of a University of Washington business plan competition. We were basically undergraduates trying to solve our own problem, which was recording video when we skied. And so we came up with a camera that connected to your camcorder, and we got third place, which was about twenty grand. I always joke was enough to have a cake party, but instead we started a company. So we started making a camera, one into two, two into three, and along the way came YouTube. And it just became way too complicated to capture video, download the video, and then share it. I thought, all right, this has got to be easier. How do I make a camera with one button when you plug it in, give you software so you can push it online? And that was uh, about three years ago, and since then it's been on a rocket ship. And today you have Contour, which is a platform with some hands-free video cameras. This is the latest one. Uh, we give you mobile apps or desktop apps to interact with the camera or turn the video into something interesting and then let you push it online uh, where all your friends are at. You know, I'm really excited because we've used the HDs, we've used the GPS. Now you've got a brand new model called the Plus, and I know that it incorporates a lot of new stuff. So can you kind of give us a little bit of differentiation between the models and let's really hear about what the new Plus does. We just released what we called Contour Plus, but it was kind of rolling up everything we had learned to make 
we call it a professional storytelling tool, but it's kind of the most complete point of view camera on the market. So we've got uh, some new things in it with a new lens. You get a much bigger field of view. Uh, we introduced HDMI so we can do live streaming. So one of the big things in broadcast is people actually want to you know, connect to a transmitter and live stream the broadcast, so we enabled that. Uh, we did a bunch of small mechanical things, so we can do things like upside down video. It actually lets you record, rotate the whole image sensor upside down. Um, we also included a audio jack, so on the bottom you can actually connect to a separate microphone. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so I we didn't found a lot that. of customers wanted to use like audio on their helmets or audio separate. Um, and then outside of that, it's got some of the famous things like GPS inside the camera. We used introduced a um, higher grade uh, receiver, so you get what's called four hertz, which gets you about GPS every four seconds. So when you jump out of an airplane. You know, go a little faster than when you, you know, ride a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. It'll let you capture GPS up to four times a second. You can see the entire interview with Mark at geeky.tv slash come to her plus. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye. If there's enough crowd plus, <laughs> what do you think the world might be like in 10 years? <laughs> <laughs>